Of course, um, as part of the emergence of endoscopic head and neck surgery, there's a lot of excitement now about robotic surgery, and I've really incorporated this um, pretty comprehensively in my, into my practice, especially for oropharyngeal cancers. Um, but really, the standard approach that we have now uh, with uh, head and neck robotic systems is really using monopolar uh, electrocautery, um, uh, usually using a 5 millimeter spatula to begin your um, incisions. Uh, now, at the more deep, uh, deeply seated layers, you know, monopolar cautery is perfect because it's, it's very hemostatic and, and we want that. But where I'm a little bit frustrated with our current platform um, is in the way that I make incisions. Um, I have a five millimeter instrument and I'm using electrical current to incise very delicate mucosa in the back of the throat. Now, you could say that's only five millimeters, um, but think about what a good margin is for head and neck cancer. It's five millimeters. So when I take an instrument that's as wide as the zone, free zone of margin that I'm going to get around the tumor, uh, on the one hand, if I can get a negative margin that way, it's a great margin because it's kind of double what I actually really need. But one way I think we need to improve our current robotic platform is to incorporate the precise cutting uh, mucosal uh, incising properties of carbon dioxide laser technology. We've got to have that as an essential element to make those initial mucosal cuts and perhaps later to make uh, very detailed, uh, very precise moves, for instance, in the skull base or very close to nerves to minimize thermal injury. But we've really got to figure out a way to incorporate carbon dioxide laser technology with robotics, and I see that as a really important area for growth and development over the next couple of years.